Chiapas. What we're going to find is the tiger complex, the, the tiger, yeah. tigre, which is really the jaguar complex, right. is, you're going to find it in Oaxaca, Chiapas, Guerrero, and Puebla. When we were in Chiapas, I was looking for tigre, particularly this type that sits uh -huh. on the head. Yeah. And nowhere in the San Cristobal no. newsletter is No, it's Chiapas. It's from Su Chiapas. Su, su which Chiapas. They told us it was from yeah. Su Chiapas. Yeah. 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 Which is a, one of the two Chiapanec communities. Uh, Chiapas de Corso and Su Chiapas. I was in Su Chiapas. Okay. And Ruth has some great pictures. Uh, of Suchiapa. Suchiapa yeah. 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 And even the map of Chiapas is just S U Chiapas? Yeah. Chiapa. 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 Uh, Chiapa. Yeah. They did tell us that. The, the these are the blacks. These are the <laughs> Afro. These are the blacks that were brought in as slaves. These were runaway slaves that set up their communities on the coast of Oaxaca and Guerrero, on the, right on the border. And these were masks that are done for the Day of the Dead by the other mm -hmm. Still in the lake, some people, uh, you can see the, the, the picture that's just... In Michoacan, uh, yeah. why, why have you changed your style? Mm -hmm. And that the man said, well, I've never been to a zoo, so I now know what a tigre looks like. <laughs> oh. And that's why they became more realistic. Oh, okay. And this kind of mask mm -hmm. started being sold unpainted, uh -huh. being bought by people who took it to the Huichol, and then the Huichol did the, 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 the so, until the Huichol started yeah. carving yeah. wood. Right. So you have this sort of oh, sequence. They, did the bead, they beat it on They top beat it on Lima. Ruth was attributed with discovering the discovery of the Colima masks, oh. which would be the, these two rows. These two rows, and then the Zacatex. Mm -hmm. yeah, this one I recognize from Chloe Sayers book. Yes, it's on the about. on the cover of the English edition, or maybe the American edition. Uh, which edition? Yeah. yeah. Well, there so there was the regions of this room? All Guerrero. Oh, okay. She Guerrero. always said that Guerrero was the the like. The Sisiplan, like the mother of all men. <laughs> the heartland yeah. of masks. The heartland. That's the that's the right word. The heartland of masks and and rituals related to masks. Now the story behind this wall is that Donald Cordry became quite ill. And he was overweight. And he had diabetes, and he had his mask people because he went out into the field. Mm -hmm. 15 years before Ruth did. I mean, they got to Mexico in the early 30s. And he, he, he was sent down by Doc Stanner to collect masks. He got sidetracked with the textiles and took and made the textile book before the mask book. But he had thousands of thousands of And as he is ill and can't go back out into the field, they start bringing in these more spectacular masks that they're finding, and the metal masks, and the silver masks, you know. And Donald's all excited, and the helmets, you know. And Ruth gets into her car <laughs> and finds the mask maker, uh, or the mask makers. Right. Mm -hmm. And so this brings out this whole development of decorative masks as an industry. And so Ruth has a paper on, you know, the role of collectors and the people that they ask the interaction, the interaction between, between the collectors, the collectors and, and the middlemen. Exactly, generation exactly. Of exactly. A cultural and, transformation. But Ruth was sort of very uh, a person, I guess, who you would say was left wing, you know. Mm -hmm. And so she, her feeling was, there's nothing wrong with this because it's it's uh, generating income. But it isn't fair to pull them off as danced masks mm -hmm. right. for the collectors. They, they should dis differentiate between, between the decorative masks. Right. Right. These, these, this is the international mask collection. Right. And we're going to use it in the introduction of the exhibit to point out the, the universality of masks. These are exceptional also. These are from Tabasco. We were together at the, we were invited by the state government of Tabasco to go and see these ceremonies and dances because very little was known of them. And so this, this is from one region of Tabasco and these are from a different region of Tabasco.
Tenosique, close to the border with Guatemala. These, but you know, they look circum Caribbean with, yeah. with the. Because Tabasco is a lot of water. It's a, a very aquatic state. This one. Our idea, our, our idea now is that in this process of documentation, digitalization, other museums and collectors can sort of say, I have this, do you know where it's from? Yeah. You know, to yeah. have no. a, an that's access scary. and an exchange right. of information. Right. Has no. any of her collection ever been shown in any museums around the oh, world? Oh, yeah, I, I took a, th after she passed away, yeah. um, I took a 300-piece exhibit to the Design Museum in Finland. Oh. Just, yeah. it was a homage, it was one section of the museum was Franz Meyer, and the other section was Ruth Lake Tudor. Oh. And they were very excited because they'd never had a big folk art so exhibit. Was there a catalog produced for that? In, in Finnish. In Finland? In Finnish and Swedish. As soon as we bought the third apartment, Ruth knew exactly where everything was going to go. Yeah. She knew where the toys were going to go. We're going to see the miniatures next door, which is the old bathroom. Turns into the miniature room. And here she has a very broad spectrum oh. of, um, Again, she and I had some discussions on how some of the things are decorative and not really toys. And uh, I was invited to write an article on toys, and I bring it up, you know. Is, what, what is a toy? Mm -hmm. Is a toy something that you're actually going to see a child playing with? Or is it something that parents put on a, on, a shelf, on in a, a shelf in a say, children's room? In a children's room, no? So this is part of the tradition of Guanajuato. Guanajuato was very strong in toy making and miniature making. And these these are movable. These are, are boxers. I'm gonna have a uh, bunch of those toys. I'm sorry, Do you have a bunch of those? Some, some boxer toys. Yeah, have similar them. ones. See if you can buy them on Marcia. Now, I got involved in this because the state government asked me to look at what was happening at this community. And it was really sad because the middleman pays, has been paying for 10 years the same price to the artisans because he claims that they don't sell. So what have the artisans done? They've reduced the quality and the amount of work they put into it. Now they go to Leon where General Motors and a few other mm -hmm. car companies bring in all of their motor parts in, in uh, wooden crates mm -hmm. and they're buying the, the, the wood, crate, the, wood. the crate mm -hmm. from the, from the mm -hmm. and some of it has toxic things on it. I'm going, I don't know if we want our kids you know, having the use of this, and then they just define it less and less and less. Mm. less. So I, I tried to, I said, well, what if we do what happened to the matryoshkas, you know, where you, where you turn it into a political statement? Mm. So I had them do Tyson against somebody else, you know, and things yeah. like that. I said, we can also play with politics. At that point, it was Bush versus Bin Laden. Yeah. Well, they didn't get into it too much. But they're still really doing this. Yeah. <laughs> you have a demo or not? You have a demo? Gorgeous piece. These, oh, yeah. these so the children things. play with. And it has a candle inside. Wow. Oh. It's a candle this is Dr. So-and-so, this is his specialty. She knew exactly what we were talking about. And she talked to him, and then he started talking to me, but her ear was like, mm. so he took me out, we, we, had the, we made a signal to the nurse, and we went out and he said, she's ready to go, she's, she, I mean, there's no quality of life, she can't breathe. And he says, we're gonna change this medicine for this medicine, and of course nobody says the word the M word, mm -hmm. and so um, I go to get it, I cry, I have a little crash on, uh, you know, on the way, mm -hmm. so then I buy the stuff, I come back, and we give it to her, and she said, I'm afraid, but she took it, exactly 24 hours, she went like, out like yes. a light, yes. just, mm -hmm. just, no, she was, she had had breakfast, and she just started fading, and I said, that's the way to go. Mm -hmm. 
It can't be pulled the plug. What, what was the medicine? The final medicine? Probably morphine, morphine. but 